Hello students, welcome to the lecture on supply chain innovation and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand supply chain integration, define a framework of supply chain integration, explain model for integrated inbound and outbound networks, describe global supply chain design, discuss logistic in a global economy, define trust in supply chains. Let's start with a small introduction. Globalization intensified competition in most industries. This came at a time when firms competing in major markets were experiencing increasing difficulty to grow revenues in their home markets. As a result, firms were forced to focus on cost reduction as a means to increase shareholder value. Offering low product prices as a result of being a low-cost producer was perceived as one of the most important competitive advantages as a decade ago. Meanwhile, companies have also streamlined their businesses and increased focus on their core competencies through outsourcing, which in turn has led to increased dependence on suppliers for value creation. Role of Innovation Constant development and adaptation is of utmost importance for any enterprise. Absence of these leads to loss of competitiveness, commoditization of products and services, and ultimately performance deadline. Innovation is the key lever to create differentiation. Innovation may take shape along two dimensions, where the first one is related to magnitude, ranging from incremental to radical, and the second is impact, ranging from sustainable to disruptive. The first category, incremental and sustaining innovation, entails minor improvements that do not alter the current competitive market forces to any large extent. The second category, radical innovations, include innovation of a larger scale that significantly improve a product or service, yet ensuring the overall product function is in line with customer expectation. The third category, disruptive innovations, completely changes market condition and customer expectation. The fourth category, disruptive and radical innovation, is a combination of the second and third categories. These are large-scale disruptive innovation that become established in the market very fast and very rare. Integration in context refers to the extent to which various supply chain activities and processes work together in as seamless a manner as possible. It has long been recognized that traditionally managed businesses and supply chains, often characterized by high levels of fragmentation, have failed to achieve their true potential in terms of profitable meeting customer expectation. Supply Chain Integration SCI is to a great extent concerned with the development of more integrated approaches that hold out the prospect of eliminating many of the inefficiencies directly attributable to supply chain fragmentation. The Evolving Supply Chain Management Environment The literature suggests that a number of key issues are changing the supply chain management, SCM and logistic strategic landscape. Arguably, the three most significant such issues are internationalization or globalization of supply chains, vertical disintegration, the changing role of the supply chain as a source of strategic leverage. Internationalization is being driven by changing structures in the international economy and business environment. Vertical disintegration is largely a consequence of outsourcing and fragmentation in context refers to strategic leverage, particularly in the context of product strategy. Framework of supply chain integration Supply chain integration is a new kind of organizational model taking dynamic alliance of supply chain as a subject to realize global resource integration through interactive, collaborative operation of supply chain. A three a challenge theoretical framework for supply chain integration based on Thorne's model, Thorne 2002 is established and then the relative techniques are presented in each level which will be illustrated as followed. The three a challenge theoretical framework for supply chain integration. In order to integrate supply chain effectively based on the comprehensive hierarchical planning framework by Thorne, we establish a theoretical framework for supply chain integration. According to the framework, the key relative techniques can be sorted into three challenge 
based on the rules for entity objectives to relative objectives and from basic capabilities to advanced capabilities basic operation management level the planning and controlling level and the strategic management level the integration in operation management level key elements in the operational management level the operational management level is a level aiming at synchronous operation of supply chain the key issue is this level is how to balance and coordinate the restriction such as resources information capacity and time to integration and coordination within each firm and between firms the integration and operation level of supply chain can be illustrated in two dimension internal integration and external collaboration internal integration and collaborative internal operation of within focal firm the internal integration the function to function integration within the focal firm is the first step of operation integration and also the basic of to such success of supply chain integration high internal integration can reach a level of collaborative internal operation with which the whole firm works like an integrated system that result in better performance and better interdepartmental effectiveness such as cycle time reduction better in stock performance increased product availability levels and improvement in order to delivery lead times Moreover, high internal integration is also the foundation of high external integration. For the internal integration is process oriented. The firms need to come across the border of function to build a borderless flat organization through B PR business process reengineering combined with ICT based advanced production modes such as MRP II manufacturing resources planning, ERP enterprise resources planning, lean production agile manufacturing concurrent engineering etc the bpr is a fundamental approach for internal integration within the focal firm which emphasizes the fundamental rethinking and a radical redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvement in critical contemporary measures of performance such as cost quality service and speed external collaboration and collaborative supply chain operation the second dimension of operational integration is called external integration or intercompany interaction referring to the cross border operational integration in the supply chain which can place customer and supplier processes closer together external integration makes the supply chain operate like a real physical entity to gain more powerful competitive advantage high external integration can be divided into supply chain operation and collaborative supply chain operation based on the internal integration level of each firm the former one is high external integration with low internal external integration in fact it rarely exists the latter one is a real high integration type based on high internal integration and high external integration High integration supply chain operates in a form of virtual organization which is like a physical entity with high competency. Logistic deals with the placing, parsing and pacing of materials and goods. The common objective of any logistic network model is to minimize the transportation cost or maximize the profit. Focus on the end customer collaboration and virtual integration are some trends that will revolutionize supply chain logistic. Logistic is divided into inbound and outbound logistic. Inbound logistic deals with the ordering, procurement and transport of materials from the suppliers to the manufacturing facility. Outbound logistic is a part of the supply chain process that moves towards and adds value to goods on the way to their final destination it sits between supply side processes such as purchasing and materials management and demand considerations such as sales marketing order taking and customer service the automobile supply chain network is one of the ideal case studies for logistic because of the complexity involved and also the scale of the problem it involves an entire network of multiple tire suppliers, manufacturing plants, sub-assembly plants, assembly plant, warehouses, distribution centers, dealers and customers. Logistic 
plays an important role in the economic development and enhancing the competitiveness of all the trade sectors of the economy, namely agriculture, manufacturing and services, modeling inbound logistic of automobile network. The first step in inbound modeling is to create the ASIS model. The ASIS model is used to represent the current logistic system in terms of a simulation model. This helps us analyze the operations of the current system and identify areas for improvement. Data collection. Information regarding the suppliers, the location, quantity of material moved in a particular time period from the suppliers to the plant and average transportation costs per truck were obtained from the company. ASI simulations modeling. Step 1. Supplier cubic meter capacity per day was used to get the number of days a supplier takes to produce one cubic meter. This input from the suppliers was used to create supply schedules, the material arrival schedules for the Delhi and Pune Consolidation Center from material supplies was also collected. Step 2. These parts are loaded into small or medium trucks according to the given data. Once the truck is full, there is a one-hour maintenance and contingency delay added to include the time required to make the truck ready for leaving. Step 3. Once the trucks leave the consolidation center at Delhi, they take a certain transit time before they reach the plant. The transit time varies from 4 to 6 days for transportation from Delhi to Chennai according to the data collected. Over the past 10 years, supply chain management, SCM, has become an important focus of competitive advantage for firms and organizations. The impact of SCM has increased steadily, drawing on developments in data processing, managing science, logistic, operation management and other fields. The promise of SCM is better use and deployment of resources across the entire enterprise. While it has long been recognized that considering the impacts of managerial decision across a complete organization leads to better performance, the tools, concept and computing environment have fully been available for the past decade to realize this potential on a large scale. A supply chain is a set of value-added activities that connects a firm suppliers to the firm's customer. The basic unit of a supply chain activity is given by receive input from supplier, add value, Delivered to customer, supply chain design is a process of determining the supply chain infrastructure, the plants, distribution, centers, transportation modes and lanes, production processes, etc. that will be used to satisfy customer demands. These studies are strategic in scope, use the time horizon of months or years and typically assume little or no uncertainty with the data. Supply chain execution is a process of determining solution to more tactical issues such as local inventory policies and deployment, manufacturing and services schedules, transportation plans, etc. Distinguishing characteristic of supply chain design in a global context, supply chain design, decisions are often made in an environment that is rich with uncertainty, filled with multiple conflicting objectives and incomplete information. Typically, the following spec are part of this environment. Supply chain redesign in practice, SCD decision are rarely focused on green field situation, a novel process. Many firms are inexperienced at examining changes to the supply chain when the matrix span the entire organization. Impacts affect multiple groups. Changes in the design of a supply chain often lead to impacts and span large parts of the organization. Organizational incentives may work against change. The outcome of a SCD may require changes that cause one group to have a decrease in existing measures of performance but resulting in an improvement of firm level measures. Coordination across functional boundaries. A key benefit of SCD is that it often requires coordination between groups that typically do not interact. This collaboration leads to a better understanding of cross-functional issues. Data needs are difficult to satisfy. Since SCD spans many areas of the organization, the data required to support analysis must be drawn from many sources. The data may be measured at different frequencies, may use different scales or are contained in private sources that may be difficult to obtain. Duties are cost assessed for the input 
importation of goods. The cost of the duty is typically based on the value of the imported good, the type of good imported and the country of origin. In the case where the imported good is used to manufacture another product that is subsequently exported, some or more or all of the duty costs may be recovered as duty drawback. In order to provide domestic manufacturing opportunities, some countries require a minimum local content before a firm is permitted to sell a particular product. This restriction requires that a specified fraction of the value added to the final product must occur within the country where the product is sold. The increase in global production sharing, the shortening of product life cycles and the intensification of global competition all highlight logistic as a strategic source of competitive advantage. Technological advances and economic liberalization have created new opportunities for countries to harness global markets for economic growth and development. But expanded supply chains and global production networks put a new premium on moving goods in a predictable, timely and cost-effective way. Well-connected countries can have access to many more markets and consumer. A country as distant from most major markets as Chile can be a major player in the high-end world food market, supplying fresh fish and perishable fruits to consumers in Asia, Europe and North America, but for the poorly connected, the costs of exclusion are considerable and growing and the risk of missed opportunities loom large, especially for the poorest landlocked countries, many of them in Africa. Measuring Logistic Performance Improving logistic performance has become an important development policy objective. The performance of customs, trade-related infrastructure, in land transit, logistic services, information system and port efficiency are all critical to whether countries can trade goods and services on time and at low cost. International logistic encompasses an arrow of action ranging from transportation, consolidation of cargo, warehousing and border clearance to in-country distribution and payment system. The sequence cannot be easily summarized in a single indicator nor is it easy to collect on a global basis the information to build a performance measure information on time and cost associated with some important logistic processes such as port time time to clear custom and transport provides a good starting point and in many cases readily available but this information even when complete cannot be easily aggregated in a single consistent cross-country data set because of essential differences in the supply chain structure among countries. To address this, the World Bank with its professional and academic partners has produced the first Logistic Performance Index LPI to start closing the knowledge gap and help countries develop logistic reform programs to enable trade and enhance the competitiveness. The LPI gap, the difference between a country's actual LPI ranking and its expected ranking based on its level of income also highlights association between logistic performance and trade and FDI outcomes. Good logistic performance benefit more from globalization. Logistically friendly countries are more likely to have better global value chain integration and attract export-oriented FDI. Since trade and FDI are the key channels for the international diffusion of knowledge, poor logistics may impede access to new technology and know-how, therefore slowing the rate of productivity growth. Conversely, increased trade creates demand for good logistics, putting pressure on facilitating reforms and sustaining a market for modern services. Trust is the basic of agility of flexibility. Yet it is an incredible challenge to establish trust and maybe even harder to maintain it. Underlying the challenge is a question of how to institutionalize trust between buyer and supplier. The above quote underscores the difficulty of really understanding the dimension, nature and fabric of trust in buyer, supplier, relationship. Trust is both individual and institutional. Trust evolves based on an area of commodities among those in the supply chain. This evolution is quite clearly an arduous growth process that demands patience, clarity of thought and goals and a will to succeed. More specifically, Riddell's identify five trust components in supply chain, integrity, honesty, fairness, 
loyalty, openness or frankness in dealing with the partnership and competence. Each of the five components of trust may occur to verifying extent independently of the others. Did you know, as a business idea, the supply chain was something with a life of its own, which needed specialist management development in the 1990s about the same time that the world transportation was replaced by logistics. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Supply Chain Management SCM has attracted a lot of attention in both business and academic circles. A simulation model of the operation of a linear shipping network that consider multiple service routes and schedules would help better understand the usage of simulation in building a logistic model. The supply chain operations level involves a whole process from the material acquisition to order fulfillment, which is the physical level and basic elements and supply chain. Information regarding the suppliers, their location, quantity of material moved in a particular time period from the suppliers to the plan and average transportation cost per truck were obtained from the company. Technological advances and economic liberalization have created new opportunities for countries to harness global markets for economic growth and development.